Welcome back to another episode of The Investment Advisor. I'm your host, Matthew Stevenson, in partnership with Dukas Copy TV. Remember, money can take care of you, it cannot take care of itself. Today we're going to look at the biggest subject on earth in terms of people, in terms of money, in terms of ideas even, and that's China. Do you want to have your money invested in China? And if so, where do you want it and what are you going to hope to get from it? It's not the easiest subject, so to break it down, I'm going to look at just one of the many ETFs operating in the Chinese equity market. In this case, it's called PGJ, it's Power Shares. You've got your own. There are many others on the markets. It's not to say this company is to be bought or to be sold. It's to say, what has done, how has a basket of Chinese equities done in the last 10 years? Is this something you want your money in? You may know more about China than I do, certainly in a business sense. I'll tell you my experience with China. I go several times a year. I rent a bicycle. I ride the trains. I take the buses. And I go all over. And the part of China that remains a riddle for me is how much of the growth in China is real, meaning people getting up, working 12-hour days, coming home, and doing it all over again the next day, and how much has been artificial, the, the currency being artificially pegged at a low level, all the internal debt that's built up in and around Chinese companies, all the subsidies that, the say, the real estate business has enjoyed by having one big company buying all their, their floor space, and that's the Chinese government. So when we, when we look at our own investments in China, and what are they? Maybe it would be this, this ETF. If you'd had money in China in the last 10 years, you can see it hit a high of about $38 a share. Right now it's about 32, so you haven't made any money. Now, if you got in after 2008, after the crash in 2008, at $12 a share, and now it's 32, you think, whoa, China, one of the great investments out there. But China's a roller coaster, so you have to keep in mind that you don't want to be paying to get on that roller coaster when it's at the top of its, uh, of its, of its journey. The next thing about looking at possible investments in China, ETFs, whatever they are, is how are they vulnerable? Well, I think they're vulnerable in several ways. One is a credit crunch. Rising interest rates in China, rising interest rates externally, say with the US dollar, to cool down that perhaps overheated economy is gonna hurt, hurt very badly uh, Chinese companies. So don't, don't think that it's immune from the economic cycles around the world. And lastly, the growth rate. Everyone expects China to keep growing forever, 10, 11 percent a year. That isn't going to happen anymore. So in the end of the day, would I put my money in China? Would I keep it on the sidelines? I think I'm going to wait on China. I think China is a bit overexpensive, a bit expensive in terms of what you get for your money. I think I'd like to see it have a bit of a, of a correction here. Maybe on an ETF like this, selling in the, the lower to mid-20s could be a better opportunity. China's gonna, it's been there for 2,000 years, it's gonna be there for another 2,000 years, and you just wanna make sure your money goes in at a chance where it can, it can walk along the Great Wall with safety and conservative appreciation. Well, that's all the time we have today on the Investment Advisor. I'm your host, Matthew Stevenson, in partnership with Dukas Copy TV. Remember, money can take care of you. It cannot take care of itself. <laughs> <laughs>